I got a big topic. The number one fastest way to grow a property and casualty insurance agency. This is something that we get asked a lot because we have a lot of, out of the 20, 30,000 agents that follow our content on a daily basis, I would say that there's a decent percentage that are, that are in the PNC world. They're selling home insurance, they're selling a car insurance, they're selling, you know, they're selling commercial. And we get a lot of questions on, hey, how, what's the fastest way to grow one? Because typically it takes time to grow a PNC operation. It takes years, not just days, weeks, and months. It takes years. I would say the fastest way, because if you want to go from zero to, you know, 3,000 households, like JR on our, uh, I think it was three or 4,000, like JR on our podcast, What's the fastest way, the number one fastest way to do that? If you think about it, the number one fastest way to go from zero, okay, from zero to, let's just say, 1,000 households. Because at 1,000 households, you're bringing in hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So what's the number one fastest way? for a PNC operation to go from zero, and I got a lot of PNC friends gonna be like, dude, what, 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 what do you, how do you know the answer to that? I know, okay? Zero to 1,000 households, the number one fastest way. So let's, let's break that down. 1,000 divided by 50, that's 50 weeks, that's 20 households per week, okay? 20 households per week, that is four per day. So that's four households per day. So how would you make this a reality? The way I would make this a reality, if I was jumping in the PNC space or I wanted to speed it up or I wanted to get to 10,000 households, I would do this. I would build a sales team. I would give them a base plus commission. I would have them work their warm market and I would have leads and prospects for them to talk to, or I'd make them cold call, okay? Because activity is king, when you, especially when you're talking about PNC, the PNC world. So what would that look like? Well, you could have a sales team of, let's just say three people, and then you and your assistant are also adding on one household a day, okay? So this is from you, this is from them, and guess what? You're adding four households every single day simply because, and I gave you the answer really quick in the first like three, four, five minutes, because why wait, right? That's the fastest way to get to a thousand. So let's just say that you're like, hey Cody, I want to get to five, I want to get to five thousand households. Okay? Five thousand households, okay, divided by fifty. Obviously. If you divide it by 50 weeks, that, that 5x is it. You need 100 households a week. You see the idea? If you're wanting to do it over the course of a year, which is like extremely crazy and difficult, divided by 5, you're needing about 20 households a day. Okay. In that example, if you had a sales team of, let's just call it, eventually you could have a sales team of 10 people that are all bringing on two a day and you've got your 20. So everything we do is math, it's numbers, and it relies on, I think, I think this is what it relies on, but I wanna talk about, I wanna break this thing down a little further and say, okay, what is the best way to build a sales team? Because I am building a sales team here. I've built a sales team to where we're doing six figures a week in revenue just from our inside sales team, okay? So I know a little about building a sales team. I've helped build agencies, I've built internal sales teams, I've built call centers, I've built a lot of different sales teams. And when you think about building a sales team, the best sales people come to me, I find out about them, and they come to me via a referral. Which means that somebody in my network is recommending a salesperson to join my team. Or I've got someone on my sales team that's referring someone that would like to be on the sales team and then maybe I give them like a talent scout bonus because they referred someone that's also on the sales team. That just happened. Alex referred Jordan. After Jordan makes five sales, Alex gets a $250 cash bonus for referring Jordan. Okay, that just happened. So 
I, the pr preferred method is via referral, someone I know, someone that's not cold, okay? Now, then, in this case, they need to get their PNC license or their insurance license, okay? But the, the, the things you can't forget is there has to be some accountability. And what I mean by accountability is you have to track their numbers daily, weekly, and monthly. I would actually keep a P&L on every single salesperson that's on your team so that you know over the course of the last 90 days or, or last month, I made this much money off of that individual. And if they're not, if you're not profiting by having them, then you move on and find somebody else, okay? So that, that's one of the things. Also though, you've got to, you gotta be training them. So what does that look like, okay? So you need to be training them. There needs to be daily, there needs to be daily improvement. And if you want me to come out and spend a day with your sales team and show you what I'm talking about, that's fine, I will gladly do it, okay? There's three different ways that we need to see daily improvement with a sales team. Every sales team needs this. If your sales team isn't getting it, then you're not getting as much as you can out of your sales team and you're holding yourself back and you're holding your sales team back, okay? Daily improvements. I would say the first thing right away is that they need to receive sales training every single morning. Everybody always focus on product knowledge. Product knowledge doesn't matter if you don't have anybody to talk to or if you can't close a deal. Okay, sales training. I don't care if it's videos, okay? It doesn't even matter. We've got a insurance, in, our insurance university, we're rolling it out for like $97 a month. Your whole team could be on it every single day, okay? Sales training. The second thing outside of sales training, because you gotta improve every single day, because you're not moving forward, you're probably moving, what, backwards, right? Sales training. The second thing outside of sales training is the energy needs to be right. The energy of my sales team sucked at 8.30 a.m. this morning, but that doesn't mean that when they get on the phones at 9 a.m. that that's gonna cut it. They're going to be awake, they're going to be prepared, they're going to be ready, and I'm going to expect a lot out of them, okay? So, energy. We do push-ups or jumping jacks or we run around the building, whatever. Doesn't matter, the energy has to be up. It's gotta be up. They got to be ready for the day. We used to not make sales for the first several hours of, the, of every day in the morning. Now everyone's making a sale within the first 30 to 60 minutes because the energy is different. And the energy in your sales team, in your office, and what you're doing needs to be different. Energy fuels everything. It improves your culture, okay? And to help with energy, we also have music playing in the sales room because you don't want it to be like, if there's no noise and it's quiet and it's just going to be boring and you're not going to get people like pushing and grinding and, and, and high activity, energy, m music sets the mood, okay? The third thing we do is we role play every single day. We either have them role play back and forth, hey, I'm not interested, now what do you say, okay? Or hey, 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 hey you know what, I've already got car insurance, uh, 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 now what do you say, right? Or, you know what? We will do the circle closing, the, the, the Cody's competitive circle closing challenge, the 5C game. I just made that up, uh, the title. The, w w and, and they get in a circle and they get used to asking questions to each other and you can't ask the same question you already asked and you can't ask the question that somebody else already asked and you can't hesitate and you can't stutter and you gotta be ready, you gotta always ask a question, you can't answer the question, but you gotta keep asking questions. And by doing that, it wakes their brain up. It gets their mouth talking because most salespeople are not awake the first couple hours of the day. Brian Tracy says on the art of closing the sale, you should wake up two hours before any business activity, sales related activity. And so if, you're wake, if your team's waking up at 7.30 and they're working at 8.30, they're not awake and they're not gonna be awake till at least 9.30. So, it, so you're losing time, you're losing hours, they're not active, they're not working, they're not awake. You're losing productivity if you're letting them sleep in, okay? I'm just telling you, that's just the way it is, okay? You, it's your sales team, you do whatever you want, but on my sales team, that, that, that doesn't fly, okay? I believe in working out, I believe in thinking bigger, I believe in writing goals, I believe in being ready, and, and I believe in being aggressive, man, I, and I believe in improving every single day. So, we do this two times per day. All of this. 
all of this. We, at 8.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. And we go for about 30 minutes twice a day. And you say, well, dude, you're losing an hour, an hour worth of cells. Yes but I'm gaining a lot more freaking sales by doing it. So who cares? Okay. So these are the things that we do. So if I was in your shoes and I was wanting, Hey, the fastest way to grow an agency, you need a team and you need to find a way because you're able to duplicate yourself. You can't do it all on your own. You can't go to 3000 households for car insurance, like JR 4,000, whatever it was like JR. If you're doing it all by yourself, he has a team successful people I've found and I'm learning. They typically have a team. Okay, so what's the best way? Well, maybe it's to duplicate yourself. It's to find people that you can be profitable. They're, 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 they're beasts and you can put them on your tilt, you can plug them in and they're going to be successful in their own right. And you can duplicate yourself. Salespeople do not cost you money. Let me say that again. Salesperson don't cost me money because if they're costing me money, they don't make it freaking 30 days even. If they're, the salespeople do not cost me money, they make me money. Okay. Our video guys don't cost me money. They make me money because we reach tens of thousands of insurance agents, hundreds of thousands of insurance agents all the time. If you're looking at employees and staff and everything else, th th then you're looking at like as, a, as an expense, then you're looking at it at the wrong way. Your staff, your team members should be assets, not liabilities. They should be growing your reach. They should be selling more people, right? They're either promoting or they're selling or they're bringing your customers back. There ain't much more to it. Okay. And sales could be up sales, down sales, cross sales, referrals, etc. Right. They're either. So, so that's why when you look at your, when you think about what's the fast way to grow an agency, this could be an agency in general. It don't have to be PNC. I think it comes down to growing a sales team. My dad with all the seminars, okay, he's duplicating a sales team of, of, of multiple people that are doing all the appointments for him after he does a seminar. Okay. Now, is he crazy busy? Yes, but he's duplicating himself so that he's going to write thousands of Medicare policies every year. Okay. JB down in Mississippi, same thing, man. Eric, Eric Fierro, same thing. All these guys are duplicate or Remiz, All these guys are du James Grant, etc. All these guys are duplicating themselves with a team and the team doesn't cost them money. The team, I make the best money of everything I do. I make it on my sales team, but I didn't when I wasn't doing all this every single day. And when I didn't think bigger or, or when I looked at them as an expense or a liability, it didn't, it didn't help. And it hurt my way of thinking. And I, and I like pulled the reins real hard and I ran it like a boss. And I was, you know what I mean? I wasn't there to help them sell. My goal is to help our salespeople make a ton of money, help a lot of our customers. And in turn, I'm going to make money by having them here. We're seeing that I'm making the best money off my sales team, which is why, which is why we're scaling that up. Now, if you can see that, okay, I've got, for example, let me give you an example. So let's just say that you have three salespeople. Let's just say that you've got three salespeople. Okay. You've got Betty cause she's going to be in always every illustration. You got Joe and you got junior. I don't know. Okay. No clue where those names came from, but here they are. Okay. Betty, Joe and junior. And let's just say that when you run your monthly P and L on every single salesperson, let's just say that Betty is, she's a rockstar salesperson. She's awesome. Okay. And you make about, you profit about $6,000 off of having Betty in her role. Okay. Now, Joe, let's just say that Joe and eh, Joe made you 2,800 junior junior. Let's just say junior only made you $600. Okay. So you made money on him, but if you hired another Joe or another Betty and put them in junior's role, this number could two, three, even four or five or 10 X. So what you want to do is you get rid of junior. Okay. You add someone else. Okay. You add a Cody. Okay. And then once you start seeing, okay, wow, I'm, I'm profiting, you know, I'm profiting money. I made 12 grand last month just off of these three people. Maybe we should have more of these people. Maybe you should have six salespeople because all, oh, by the way, you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're going to profit three, 400 grand for the year because you have six instead of three. Once you figure out your numbers, it's easier to scale. 
okay, it's much easier to scale. And if you're seeing that you're making money and you're profitable on having salespeople, and you, if you're not profitable on having salespeople, something is freaking wrong. You're making a mistake, you're doing something incorrect. That's all I gotta say. Because when I have salespeople, they make me money, okay? Especially if I give them attention every single day. I mean, if, if, if you're, because if you're making, okay, let's just say that you have three salespeople. Let's just say you have two sales. Let's just say you have two salespeople and they make you 10 grand a month, okay? Guess what? You could have 20 and they could make you 100 grand a month. When you add people, the number shouldn't change just because you're adding people. The number should only get better in time because these salespeople, any of them, their skill's gonna improve, okay? The, 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 the amount of money they make is going to go up. They're gonna become more loyal. They're gonna to start to take care of their clients more because they're more invested, right? They should not be costing you money. It should be improved every step of the way. So if you're thinking about it and you've got salespeople, they should be profiting you money. It's the fastest way to grow a team, an agency, a company, a business, whatever. I, I'm running out of places to put salespeople and I'm, I don't care if I gotta buy a building. I don't care if I gotta like freaking put some of them in here while we're in the middle of the show and they're selling stuff over the phone. I don't care. I'm going to find places to put more salespeople because right now salespeople make me money. Okay, I know this is long winded. I know this was a long way to say the fastest way to grow is by duplicating yourself and through a team. Salespeople should never cost you money. When you're looking at adding a salesperson, you shouldn't say, well, I've got to pay them $400 a week plus commission, whatever. Okay, if that's the case, 1600 bucks. If you can't make, you know, and maybe you throw in some leads or you throw in a dialer or you throw in different, say you're at two grand, whatever. If you can't make two grand off of your salesperson, something is, if you can't bring in and break even and make a little money on a $2,000 monthly investment, something is freaking wrong. Okay, so I wanna ch challenge you guys to start to build and grow a sales team. Start to really think outside the box, start to think bigger, start to challenge yourself, start to 10X what you've got going on We've always, in, we've always had, been, had a habit of having two, two, three, four, sometimes even five salespeople. We're about to have eight now. I may go to 20. I'm making money on them. Who freaking cares? As long as I can keep them all busy and supply them with enough contacts, and enough work, I can have 50 salespeople. It doesn't matter. Hey, if you love this video and you want to 10X your income, I got the video here just for you to help you do that. It's right there. Click on it. And most people don't know how to 10X their income. They're average, but they don't want to be average. And I'm guessing you don't want to either. I'm going to show you how the average insurance agent earns $50,600.